Well, welcome to another episode of CNC Base Camp. You know, a lot of us get into CNC machines after we've already established our workshops. We've got the table saws, the planers, all that good stuff, and then we get a CNC machine and start making little carvings and signs and whatnot. But what I'm finding out is the CNC router is a fantastic primary tool for solid wood furniture work. That's what I'm finding out here in this shop, and that's what I'm finding out at home. At home, I've got my hand tools, some portable power tools, and a CNC machine. And it's a powerful combination. So today, we're gonna make three arts and crafts tables, all solid wood, mostly using our CNC machine. So, hope you'll join me today, and we'll get started. This episode is sponsored by Inventables. Design it, build it, sell it. Learn more at inventables.com. Our first table is one that's inspired by a Limbert style cafe table. I found a picture from the California Historical Society and it really struck me. It's a very pretty little table. It's not overly large. It's 30 inches tall. It's about 40 inches long and about 24 inches wide. But I love the pierced end here on the sides. I think it's very attractive. There are two upper stretchers which hold things securely together and a lower stretcher as well. The table is made with cherry. All the components are one inch thick except for the lower stretcher which is three quarters of an inch thick. And we're going to do most all the operations for this table on our CNC machine. Our second project is this hall table. It's got a little bit of a stickly feel to it. And as you can see, up top there are two arches which visually help support the top. The arches and the lower shelf protrude through the sides and give it a nice bit of visual complexity on the end. So it's a fun table. This table is mostly made with our CNC, but not all of it. There's some operations with the top that we're going to be doing on the table saw. But it's a simple table to build. It has a nice style and good character to it. Our final table is going to be a very simple round table, very indicative of arts and crafts. The stretchers form an X, both top and bottom, and the tenons go through the legs so that they're exposed. It's very strong, makes a great companion by a chair, a couch, or any corner where you need a table. And it's going to be a great piece for us to do on the CNC machine. Well, this is one of the side panels for our Limbert table. The way we're going to approach this is as if this is a production piece. I want great quality, but I want to get the job done too. So you're going to see a couple different things happening with the side. The first, there'll be a mortise cut for the vertical stretcher in the table. After that, the machine's going to drill six holes, a hole in the center of each of the primary cutouts. The reason I'm going to do that is I want to secure the waste within each cutout with a screw so that I don't have to use tabs. I'm okay with tabs on the exterior of the panel. They're easy to clean up, but within those tight interior spaces, no tabs, not going to go there. So after the machine drills the holes, I'll secure them with screws and then we'll initiate our profile cut which will cut out the shape of each of those areas and the overall shape of the side. With the sides done, it's time to move on to the upper stretchers. Now I'm trying to be very streamlined in everything we do here because I want this to be a production piece. The upper stretchers need a shoulder cut into them to lock into those sides and keep it from racking. But I'm only going to do that on one side of each upper stretcher. I don't want to have to be flipping parts over each time. So what we're going to do first is I'm going to go ahead and cut the pocket which will drop into each side and form the shoulder and then we'll move on to our final profile cut. Next up, we're going to cut the lower stretcher, and it's an easy profile cut. Now the bit that I've been using for all of these cuts is a quarter inch diameter. It has a cutting length of one and a quarter diameter, which gives it plenty of length 
for the one inch and three quarter inch parts that I'm using. The bit is an upcut, so it clears the chips out of the kerf, and that's important. The cutting depth I'm using is one half the diameter of the bit. That's always a great rule to follow. So in this case, an eighth of an inch deep. The cutting speed, or rather the inches per minute of forward movement, I'm running about 100. And you can vary that a little bit. For a harder wood, I might slow that down to 75. But for this cherry, 100 inches per minute movement is just about right. Well, it's time to cut the last part for our Limburg Cafe table, and that's the top. Now, it's just a simple profile cut. You may have been noticing a little extra action from our CNC machine with some of the other parts, because there are T-bones that are being cut where some of the joinery is going to overlap, and we need to provide clearance for the fillets that the router bit is leaving. We'll take another look at that when we go to assemble the table. For right now, let's go ahead and cut the top. Well, it's time for table number two, the Arts and Crafts Hall Table. What I have on the machine right now is a panel to cut one of the sides out of. So we'll start with the two sides. First step is going to be to cut all the through mortises. There's one for the shelf, and then there's four small ones, which will accept the tenons on the arches. So we'll go ahead and get those cut, and then move on to a final profile cut. So now it's time to move on to the stretchers. Now there's two sets. We have the arch stretchers up top, then we have a bottom stretcher, and that bottom stretcher also serves as a shelf. So that's what I've got on the machine right now. Let's go ahead and get that cut, and then we'll move on to the arches. Well, we have the sides, the arches, and the lower stretcher, the shelf, all finished up. So now it's time to turn our attention to the top. Now, there are some things that the CNC is great for and some things that our workshop tools are a little better at. So I've gone ahead and created a top here using the table saw. I'm going to go back and bevel the ends, but first I want to go ahead and let my CNC machine do some professional work and cut the mortises in. The top actually drops down onto the sides, so there are tenons from the sides and it'll fit tightly and snugly into the mortises for the top and it'll never come off. So, I need to accurately locate those mortises. The way I'm going to do it is I'm going to have my CNC machine cut a very light cut. I'm going to have it ghost the outline of my top into my spoil board. And that will allow me then to locate it accurately. Once I've done that, I'll go ahead and set up the machine to cut the four mortises. But it's a matter of making sure my top is in the right place, and I'm going to make sure it's in the right place by having the machine ghost a sixteenth of an inch outline for me. Well, it's time to start cutting parts for our last table, a little round oak table. We're going to start out with the top. From there, I'll move to the shelf, then we'll do the stretchers, and then we'll deal with the mortises on the four legs. I've got my legs already pre-cut. So what I need to do now is add the mortises. Now, a few mortises, I like to chop those by hand, but when I've got a bunch to do, it kind of feels like sanding to me, a lot of drudgery. Well, the CNC machine is a fantastic tool for cutting mortises anytime you need it. So, what I'm going to do here is, the first thing, I'm going to have the machine cut a little ghost image of the leg into my spoil board, just like we did with the top of the previous table. That's going to help me position the part. Once I know where to place the part and have it in position, I'll then set the machine up to accurately cut all these mortises for me. Now, at that point, I need to decide, am I happy with those filleted corners or do I want to sharpen my chisels and clean them out for nice, square, neat mortises? I'll figure that out later. Well, we've cut an awful lot of parts out, and now it's time to start assembling our tables. Our first table is going to be the Limbert cafe table. I want to show you a couple things before I start putting glue into joints. One is, let's take a look at the side. and I want you to see these two cuts for our upper stretchers and see that I've uh, T-boned the bottom of each one. And that is to allow for some clearance and to do away with that fillet that our quarter inch router bit leaves. You know, we don't get nice, square, neat joints. We get filleted joints. Now, as I said earlier, I really wanted this to be more of a production piece. So everything was done on the CNC machine. 
The original, I noticed, had fillets within these cavities here. And I, so I knew it was done mechanically. And that really made this a great piece for us to do. Also notice in our mortise for the lower stretcher, the same thing, we have those fillets. So to deal with the fillets, we have to take some action. One is all of these T-bones. The other is that I'm using an eighth inch roundover on all of these parts. Partially I'm doing that because it's a table, it's gonna get kicked, it's gonna get moved around, it needs to have the edges eased. But also because that eighth inch roundover allows our parts to fit together. And this is what I like about CNC woodworking because it fit. So all of the joints have been treated in that manner. Now here are the upper stretchers. And you'll notice I have a dado cut across each end. And that is so that it will lock with our sides and keep the whole table from doing this. In order that I don't have to flip the part over and re-register it on the CNC machine, the shoulder is cut on one side only. But we have two lower stretchers, and so that really gives us a pretty good area of shoulder to lock things in place. You'll notice I have uh, cut out a recess in the bottom here, and yes, it is uh, T-boned as well because it's coming in at a different angle and so it's a different uh, different set of conditions but I want to make sure that I always open up the bottoms of these joints. The flat here will contact the flat here and register the depth of the stretcher when I put it in. So it'll lock very tight and it really works out very well. Uh, as on these end pieces I've taken my router and chased all the edges to smooth things. So upper stretchers, lower stretcher, and there are two sides. The last piece that we have to deal with is the top. So I'm going to set these aside. Here is our top that was nicely cut out using the CNC machine. And I'm going to go ahead and use my router to ease the edge. And I'll use that nice solid pilot bit. And the reason for the solid pilot is that it reaches into tight little areas. Now that's not a, an issue with the top, but with all those little cutouts and with those mortises, it definitely is. Of course, I used a 4x4 four four foot CNC machine for this table, and that allowed me plenty of room for all these parts. If you're working off a smaller machine, this table is not a problem. What you may want to do, if you have a, uh, let's say you have a 24x24, 24 24, you could go ahead and use regular uh, shop methods to produce the overall end panel. Now these edges here are slightly sprung, so you'll have to bandsaw those. But where a CNC would be really useful is for these six cutouts and this mortise. So you can easily position this piece within a 24 by 24 format machine and have your CNC router do the hard part and you do the exterior. And that's going to be true on a lot of these parts. Some of them you can, of course, uh, tile your way through, but you can be selective about what you want to do and, what you can, and how you can use your CNC to its advantage, along with your regular shop tools. And the nice thing about this table is everything self-registers, so it does square up pretty quickly. Now, when I put these in, I'm going to put these surfaces, these dado cuts, towards the inside it'll look a little bit cleaner and a little bit better. Now, when it comes to finishing this piece, you know, this is actually... The original was, of course, made of uh, quarter sawn oak, of white oak, but I chose cherry. I thought that would be a little warmer looking. A nice dark stain would be very appealing on something like this. I have begun to appreciate just natural cherry and letting it age because it really does get a lovely patina over time. So as you can see, all those, uh, all those fillets that we put in for clearance, they all disappear. So it's kind of a strategy when you're creating joinery for the CNC machine. You need to cut those, all those um, T-bones and dog bones and such for clearance, but we want it to all disappear. I, don't, I really don't like CNC joinery in which I'm looking at all those uh, little 
half rounds and different things that are used for clearance. I like it to all disappear. So I think if we plan things out well, they're going to. Now moving on with our assembly, I've got some cleat strips here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, clamp them in place on the inside of our stretchers and screw them in that are going to allow me to go up into the top. So that's how the top is attached by way of these cleats. And there we are. There's our inspired by Limburg Cafe table out of cherry and it was made with the real intent to make it a production piece, doing it, all of it on our CNC machine. Now we still had to use our planer, our joiner, our table saw to prep all of the panels so it worked in concert with our other shop tools. But the CNC was used where it could really make a difference and really count as an example on these cutouts and on our joinery. The second of our tables is the hall table with the arches. So let's go through the parts and let me show you how things fit together. Here we have one of the sides that we've cut out and of course this is the mortise for the lower stretcher or shelf and here we have the mortise for the arched pieces. One thing I want you to take a look at is you can see here that I've uh, t-boned the tenons which will go up into our top to get rid of the felt for clearance. Everything has been treated with a uh, 1 8 inch roundover bit which is also going to allow our tenons to slip into the mortises. Now if I flip the side over, ah, you're going to see that this has been cut back a little bit. Why? Well, let's take a look at the arched segments. What I wanted for the arches was I wanted it to spring directly from the side. So, in order to get these tenons to go all the way through, I needed to cut back a little bit on the amount of material removed. So if these tenons were full one inch length, it would be almost that deep and it would produce a very weak spot right here. So the easiest way to deal with that was to simply reduce that center web between the two mortises on my side and therefore allow a little more material here where it counted. And everything, whoops, and so it all fits very neatly together like a puzzle piece. Here we have the lower shelf and you can see that we've also t-boned those so that it will fit in very neatly in our sides. Now the arched pieces I have numbered because I fit each one into a specific slot. Well, the glue is set on the base of our table, so it's time to put the top on. So, time to spread a little glue on the tendons and in the mortises. Now, you can vary the width of the top a little bit and the length to suit your eye. We happen to have a piece of cherry here that was a little narrower than I would have liked, but it's not laminated. It's one solid piece, and I thought that was important. So, I went ahead and made the top a little bit narrower. So um, this is a combination then of a CNC machine but also conventional shop tools. Of course we had to make the panels using a joiner, planer, table saw. The top, that's all table saw work including the bevel. But we did use our CNC machine to create those mortises that fit so sweetly. And I know I said it again but I just love the fact that the mortises and tenons, everything comes together so accurately when I mill parts on the CNC machine. As with the other table, a bit of sanding to do, nice finish and it'll be done. Well, the last table of the group, the simple round table, and we've made it out of red oak. Of course, I used the CNC machine to cut everything out and we had those darn fillets show up. But for this piece, I want everything to be fairly sharp, very clean, and so no roundovers, no router. What I did was went ahead and used a chisel and cleaned out the bottom of each of these laps. I cleaned out the shoulder for each of the tenons. I cleaned out the corner of each of these mortises so they're all square and straight. 
I then took a block plane and put a small chamfer on all the long edges of the legs and on the bottom. On the stretchers, I took my block plane and I chamfered the end of each tenon since that's going to protrude through. These are through tenons. The top and the shelf, of course, are just simple profile cuts. Nothing fancy there. I've taken some sandpaper and just knocked the edges off of them. Do note that the top is a full one inch thick so that we get good proportions, whereas the shelf is three quarters of an inch thick. The legs are one inch and these stretchers are all five eighths. So I've tried to work with the thicknesses to achieve a good, a good balance. Some things need to look heavy and strong like the top. Some things you want a little bit lighter. The assembly is pretty straightforward. The first thing I'm going to do is begin to glue the stretchers together. So nothing too fancy there. It's just an easy lap joint and I'm just going to put a very small amount of glue in there just to kind of keep things snug and tight. The stretchers are each different. There's one set for the top and there's one set for the bottom. The lap joints allow the two to interlock so they are both different in the orientation of the lap. Now here are the stretchers for the bottom that hold the small shelf. These tenons I went ahead and centered and they'll just drop right in like so. What I have in my hand here is actually for the top. The tenon is offset. I've dropped it down from the very top to give it some room before we go into the mortise. My legs in place, I'm going to go ahead and add a little clamping pressure and we'll let it set and we'll be ready to put the shelves and the top on. Well, the glue is dry and it's time to put the shelf on. So I went ahead and carefully measured the distance from the inside of the leg to the edge of the shelf. And it's a nice two inches on all directions and I went ahead and clamped it in place. Now, I'll flip things over. and put some screws in. So here's my top. Now I need to select which side is the good one. And I think that's the underside. I've got a little bit of discoloration here. Get the, I think I'm going to go ahead and line the grain up on the shelf and on the top. That kind of makes sense to me. And I want to spend a little time making sure that it is properly centered. Once again, it's just going to be some screws. Be pretty simple and easy. And there we go. A nice simple round table. So it was a combination then of some CNC work, but some chisel work, some hand plane work, and it all made for a really fun, simple project in which things pretty much fell together. Once again, that CNC accuracy, it makes for some easy assemblies and easy glue ups. So lots of options. You can give a little thought to making some changes and making it your table. Well, thanks for joining me today as we made three arts and crafts tables. It's been a fun episode. All the DXF files some plans in a little article are going to be available for you on our website. So, thanks for joining me, and I hope to see you next month for another episode of CNC Basecamp. This episode is sponsored by Inventables. Design it, build it, sell it. Learn more at inventables.com.